Cromwell's really starting to take shape now, and actually I've got tracks on it. Uh, well, I say I've got tracks on it, I've put on the rubber tracks that actually come with it, uh, which is one of the options. Literally, it's just a big strip, you put it together, uh, link it up at one end, it kind of just loops in, so it doesn't actually even need glue, and uh, the wheels are actually just push fitted on. So I just put that around just to see what it looks like, and of course it is this vinyl rubbery type stuff, so it is flexible. One th problem is, you can sort of see that it doesn't sort of have the gravity sort of down. Now what we could do is two options if you were going to be using these would be just a little bit of glue just in the top of some of those wheels just to hold that track down into it or uh, where you've got the little valance that goes over there I guess what you could do is get something just to wedge down there before you put that little uh, fender valance on the bit of skirt just to hide hide it just so it sort of then what sits more naturally on the wheels instead of uh, rising up like that you can see um, so actually if you are going to be doing this I've got to say yeah there's some some good detail in the track as well so just like in the molded parts you have actually got some uh, good detail it's not just like rubber bands going around there which um, I thought it might have been so to be honest if I wanted to say well this is actually showing a bit of weathering but is relatively clean condition I pretty much could call this done actually especially with that paint chipping coming through with the rusting uh, you could sort of say well it's been a bit rusted but it's gone in for a bit of a clean up pop on those last bits of details and call it done but we're not going to be doing that we're going to be doing this building up the tracks uh, using the plastic parts that will allow us to uh, give it a lot more paint because this paint does not like sticking onto these vinyl tracks so we can uh, build it up prime it paint it and uh, weather it a lot better than what we could do with that so that's the plan let's just do one at a time we'll do one first then do the second one so for the moment it's just going to be a case of removing these parts from the sprue but I will try to make sure that I keep these uh, parts the, the large parts separate just in, in numerical order because uh, they are important on the size and I think if I get one of those in the wrong position that will of course uh, make uh, things a bit tougher trying to get them to sync up especially parts three and four which uh, do seem about the same size but just one link difference in size. now got this worked out so we've got this part here which is the longer part then that goes has a single then we've got this part which is h4 and then we've got the uh, single on that side and then on each end we've got 13 parts there 15 parts there those are the bits that wrap around that then go on that one on the top so essentially that's the way that the track's gonna be going round I think the best thing to do is work on the bottom part which is going to be these straighter sections because I think I can uh, work that on first of all uh, putting a bit of little bit of uh, glue in there to build up that section and then those longer ones or I say those longer but they're the longer bits of individuals will then have to be sort of built up individually but I think we can get that as the base because uh, and get the curve right on that so uh, we'll just have to uh, give that a go get some bits of glue in there and hopefully uh, try it just with the extra thin and that should uh, give us a little bit of a wiggle room with it as well so the way that this fits in shouldn't make too much difference there's two little two little notches where that's going to go into so a little bit extra thin in each so that we will have a bit of a curve and that's also going to have a bit of extra thin in there as well now what I'm got to be careful of is that I'll put the glue in there but I don't want it actually gluing onto the wheels themselves so I don't know how if this is going to work too well so just do it in a straight line for now
So it's just going to glue that straight. And hopefully that should tack that enough so that I should then at least hold it into position. Just give waited two minutes just for that extra thing to dry. Still a little bit of movement in there. It's not cured or anything yet, but it's now just going to hold its shape just so I can move it around a bit more. But what I will do is I decided I wasn't going to build up around this corner first, this end, uh, because that's going to loop around, and I think I'll use those teeth to sort of uh, for it to clamp down, and the join for the, the ends will be around here. But what I will do is before I go around here, because that's going to be sliding. Uh, is I'm going to actually just put a couple of teeth around this sprocket just to uh, hold that in place and that will that should hopefully stop that sliding around because there's no sort of nothing for it to grip on here so then that should sort of at least bed it in place and I know we won't have any lateral movements what I will also do as well is use a bit of the um, this glue um, the uh, Ravel contactor one uh, just so I can um, pop a little bit of this. The idea I'm hoping is, uh, just put far too much in there, I don't want too much, just because I don't want it to uh, stick onto the, uh, the sprocket itself. But what I'm thinking of is if I use some of that just to get it going, I can actually just build around there and uh, that should actually hold in place which it actually is a bit more and then once i'm happy that it's sort of uh, in there and then um, i can firm it up with the extra thin but i am also realizing that i'm having to take um i filed down some of those just the little tabs i thought were kind of hidden which they are i'm also just trying to put on as little as this as i can uh, which they kind of were for the, some of the straighter bits, but I think going around the curves, uh, I just want to make sure that those uh, sprue gate tabs are uh, not uh, are filed down and not so visible. Right, so that is actually kind of working. So I do. I think I put on two on that. Let's do a couple more of these. That should give me enough, and then I think it will be a case of then, again, I think the, the best thing for this is going to be patience. So get another one of those on. Because, I mean, this isn't like it's drying, This it's not like this glue is drying instantly, but it's going to give me enough time to at least uh, get it into position then once I'm sure it's sort of dried and up some it you know I can move it a little bit have a little bit of play in it so the plan is you can see it by now actually even though it's just got um, the glue's not dried it's sort of tacky enough so if I had to have picked up and moved that before I put those little uh, four just around there that would have just slid off so it's enough just to grip those sprocket teeth but again I want to make sure that it doesn't actually glue onto that sprocket 
because this at the moment is just plain, although it's black, it is just the plain plastic because once that's done I'll be taking it off and that's why I don't just want to be gluing it straight on straight away because I want to be able to take it off and uh, paint it, uh, prime it and paint it with uh, metallic. Right, so now on the outside I'll just drop a bit of the tummy or extra thin in where those links are. Need to get a new bottle of that out in a bit. lucky but actually that sort of demonstrates that the principle's working although we have just taken one of those off right so look that's just allowing me just to roughly put it in place there we are. and then just bend that around so before I start moving it around, I'm going to pop a bit more glue on there and then just a bit more of the extra thin. Make sure that is going around a bit more as well. Those are sitting about right lock it in place with this. So again, let's just leave that for another couple of minutes. It's not coming apart. Yeah, just leave yeah, just leave that. If I the more I start fiddling with it, the more it's gonna start moving around and the more uh, I'm gonna have issues with it. So waiting for this to dry, that's still a bit tacky around the edge, but just man, just making sure that it's actually following the contours around that sprocket. I just had a thought that actually, just because the way that was moving around, like linking together, but still had some flex to it, um, and then waiting for it to dry, I thought what I'll do is this part with 13 pieces here, I will put together in a line then see if that is going to be uh, basically I can then just wrap that round the uh, front wheel so uh, hopefully this sh I can do it quick enough that it won't actually set solid but uh, tack together enough so that it can hold in place and then I'm not trying to build it up uh, individually Probably be a bit easier on the back because there's the sprocket that actually will hold it into place. But I'd say this this front wheel, uh, it's just completely smooth and it's also quite small, so it's uh, going to be have some curves, you know, quite a serious curve going on in there. So let's just build this up and uh, see what happens. So we've got this little part, there should be uh, 13, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, that's good, none of them went pinging off. That, that should have flex to it, but if I try to just pick it up, we should, yeah, so it's actually now stuck together, but it, the glue's not dry on there, so it should still be able to bend round. And then what I need to try to do is to manoeuvre it Hopefully that's dry enough that that will stay on there. That's good. So we just actually had that, I don't know if you noticed, that just sort of slipped off those wheels there. But I mean, there's obviously the groove going between the double wheels where it, it's, uh, you know, the track stays on. But because we've got some of those, just a couple of teeth going around that sprocket, that's enough to keep that into position. So what I'm hoping, <laughs> it really is hoping, 
I have no idea if this is going to work. I was thinking whilst doing this, I really should have researched this, but um, I didn't. So, uh, but sometimes I do find if I do things the way I think, I might come up with something new or what other people do, I might get it completely wrong. But I either come up with a new concept or learn from my mistakes. So you can see that's now got enough. I can now bend it around, which is good. I've got some glue on those teeth. Uh, oh, I really don't want to be dropping that. So that is quite delicate. So I've got glue on it, but it doesn't mean it's dried. Okay, so that one is now linked into there. Keep I'm just trying to keep a bit of pressure on here to then get that round that quite tight. Ah, that's come apart there. Um, where's it come apart? On each. Oh. See, the good thing is that had dried enough, so that's actually now kept that in position. finger sticking to that there we go the thumb stuck there right so you can see here we've got it looping around there and uh, it's now just dropping back in I mean fortunately it does also give uh, you can see how you know, it does actually drop down so it's giving you I mean in theory you could actually count how many uh, parts we've got there just to see with the teeth um, I won't, but I might be forced to in a bit. Okay, give that a moment just to uh, go, but you can see we are kind of uh, getting that. I think that actually, I'm going to give myself a pat on the back. I think that was quite a, um, a good idea doing that for the moment, I think at least. And then this one will go in there. And in fact, if I put some glue on the end of those teeth, I think I've got an idea, but let's just try it first before I start saying what it is. So I should be able to slot that in. And now what I'm thinking of, if I can use those tweezers, the pressure of those tweezers is now pushing that flat into position on there. We'll need a second set. And then I can take this one and hopefully maneuver. The end of that little chain that I've done onto there. Which I think at the moment I have got it. Come on. Okay, whilst that's just sort of drying in position, I'm just going to get on and make up this uh, final little chain.
if that worked, I'm actually uh, pretty pleased with that one. Um, especially for a first go at doing it like this. Um, so I think it's just going to be a case of sit back and uh, make a cup of tea, uh, wait and then take that off and then uh, once we know that that glue is going to be pretty much holding it in place and then um, go around all of those joins with the extra thin just to really belt and braces properly just bring it all together because what I don't want to do is um, once that glue properly cures for it to then uh, snap uh, as well. I mean it would be easy enough to sort of bring it back together because at least we kind of got those curves going on but if we can do it all in one without the snapping <laughs> then that's going to still make life a lot easier. So I think it's going to be time to have a cup of tea and then uh, see what this looks like on the uh, just literally a couple of minutes. Um, let it go off but still not completely harden just so we've got a little bit of flexure in it. Right so I've just made my cup of tea. Um, now it's still quite hot so it's only been five ten minutes probably by the time I went downstairs through the dog toy out in the back garden a couple of times with the kettle I made a cup of tea come up so this is about five ten minutes just to um, sort of dry now I've realized it's not exactly perfectly in position which is fine because once it actually goes on finally then it will be getting glued into position uh, we're only looking for it to be pretty much bang you know now it's pretty much bang on then actually but as long as it's kind of enough into position that you still have a little bit of flex to it then I will try to and then actually this might be the tricky bit because here this one has looped around a bit actually let's use those they've got a bit more points so then there we go okay and I mean if for example it were to snap somewhere uh, that probably should be fine as long as now those curves are kind of at least pretty much don't need to be precise but are pretty much in place that should be fine so am I now going to be able to take this out ah, now this will wants this just to slide out that way maybe because that's not glued in can I pop that wheel out uh, can I I'm trying to do that without a right pop that down there and as you can see if that now links up that's in there we've now got that into position and actually I wonder if that was just scale if it was that would have been amusing no it's not but not quite to scale but we can just see compared on there yeah we have got the curves uh, got that curve permanently in there now so I will few, put a few drops on those joins of the Tamiya Extra Thin just to really bond that into place. Uh, probably not needed, however I'm thinking, you know, why not to be honest. Uh, if it just helps give it that extra little bit just to help weld that glue together, then once I've done that I can then uh, do the other side. So actually it will be a case of more just liberally brushing this on. So I think now it's just going to be a case of getting the next sprue and again just going to be a case of taking everything off of here, all those parts, making sure this time file down those little edges uh, because I did find that they, I thought they were going to be hidden but they do actually stop it butting together completely. Uh, so get all these bits off and uh, build up the, uh, the other side.
go, I seem to, I don't know if I got lucky there, but just from experience of just doing the other side whilst it was still fresh in my mind, uh, just seem to have actually managed to have got that pretty much bang on straight away. It's a loop round there, uh, round there, and then up to here. So what I think we'll do is just leave it like that just for a moment so just waiting for that to just dry up a little bit so what we'll do is build up the next set which will just wrap around that front one there Okay, so that should now be done, as in that's getting held in place. Now, obviously, just holding it in place there with the pressure of the uh, tweezers pushing out just to hold down the sprockets. We're not actually glued up again on that far end, so we can split that there. There was a little incident where some of the glue had come through and I'd actually just stuck the track onto that wheel. Uh, so I've just separated it. Fortunately, I'd waited just long enough so it was stuck, but um, tacky enough that I could actually uh, remove it. And I've just rotated the wheel out of the way. However, when I take this off in a bit, I will just do a little bit of a clean up on there, just because there's a little glob of glue on there. So I uh, just rotated that around, just to make sure that doesn't stick. But at the moment, I'm just really waiting for this to dry into position. Right, so I've just put some primer on, and for that I actually used the Mr. Surfacer 1200. So I've just a uh, basic coat primer. It's not completely primed. There's patches in there, to be honest. Um, it's not an absolutely smooth coat of it, but it should be enough to give a key for the um, paint to go on, which I'll be using the MRP Gunmetal, the MRP 149. 